All right, welcome back to the part two of my Unique Melody Maverick review. Now, I want to keep this video short uh, because I know that the previous two videos on the packaging and the physical features of the Maverick uh, are very long, so I kind of want to keep this video short and sweet. But uh, before I talk about the sound quality, uh, this part of the review is going to be all about the sound quality, but before I t go to... Uh, um, talk about those or talk about that um, I just want to say that I have these for a little bit more than three months well no uh, actually almost three months and uh, these actually held up really well uh, there are no scratches at all uh, I still look pretty pristine uh, the silvery finish is still absolutely gorgeous I, s I think these still look like how they were when I first unboxed these of course, they are a little bit more oily now, but uh, that's not really a problem with the earphones themselves. The cables work fine. I still think they are a little bit flimsy, but you know, it's really soft, uh, very malleable. The splitter works fine because the cable is no longer sticky, so that's very nice, very convenient. And the audio jack, I have no problem with it. Um, of course, this is a right angle design, and uh, you know. Let me try to get the camera to focus first. Okay, it's failing pretty hard right now. <laughs> very, very hard. Okay, there we go. Yeah, right angle jack with string relief. Uh, you know, the cable works fine. So, uh, absolutely no, pro uh, no complaints about... Well, actually, I do have a complaint. So, um, this plastic part... Uh, it's actually pretty sharp uh, towards the end of uh, this plastic bit so when I put these on I sometimes find that uh, the plastic coating would scratch my ears but that's really a minor problem so let's jump right into the sound quality of the Maverick so um, in short I would say that these earphones sounds like Okay, I would say that these earphones are neutral bright. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, usually you will hear uh, like adjectives or terms describing earphones as bassy or mid-centric or you know flat neutral or uh, they have a lot of treble, uh, warm, dark, uh, bright. So to me, well, basically neutral means across the frequency spectrum you don't find anything to jump out at you. So it's kind of flat, kind of neutral. Um, and these earphones are basically that, except these do have really prominent treble. Uh, I think that these have like a, maybe like a 16 kilohertz bump in the frequency response. Obviously I don't know for sure because I don't have the machines required to, you know, test the frequency response on these, but that's what I th feel about uh, these earphones. So let's go more in detail with this neutral bright deal. Okay, so for the bass, um, okay, so these earphones are hybrid earphones. So they use dynamic drivers and BA drivers, uh, balance armature drivers, to produce sound. So the bass is actually handled that dynamic driver and the balance armature driver. So there are two drivers handling ba the bass on both sides. Uh, in total, there are 10 drivers. Uh, you would think that with one dynamic driver and one BA driver, the bass on these would be really boomy and bassy and not fun to listen to. Uh, because usually with dynamic drivers, uh, you'll find that the tuning on them to be very bassy. So that was kind of my worry uh, with the Maverick, but that's not the case. I find that the bass has great texture and it has really nice um, uh, bass extension. And I can know that because I do use a like a test album that I uh, curated myself, and one of the soundtrack has some really deep bass notes. So if I just listen for those, I can tell what the bass is supposed to be like, and, you know, the extension on, on the bass, so... I think Unique Melody has done a, done a great job with uh, tuning the bass uh, and uh, 
since these events are my first, uh, uh, I guess, adventure or yeah, my first venture into hybrid events, I must say I'm very impressed by what dynamic driver events can do, and I'm very really excited to uh, sort of listen to more events like these. But um, I think the combination of dynamic drivers and BA driver for this for the base on the Maverick is uh, perfect. Um, it is fast, uh, and it's got great texture. It's not boomy. It doesn't drown out everything else. Uh, so I really enjoy the bass on the Maverick. Now, as you can see on the earp on, on the earpiece, there are some holes. So I think these holes are supposed to sort of make the bass not as bassy as they are. If you cover these holes up, you will find the bass to be a little bit more prominent, just a little bit more. Um, but there's also a problem with uh, these ports. So. Um, since these earphones, uh, like, okay, so if you look at the shape, you'll find that uh, these earphones basically fit the shape of your ears. And uh, even though these are just universal earphones, I would have to say these seal really nicely. But because there are um, holes on the earpiece, you'll actually be able to hear outside noises. So when you use these outside, you would hear more noises uh, going through the, earp the earpiece. But you know, you can just turn up the volume on uh, your music player and that would be totally fine. Okay, moving on to the mids. So, um, the mids are actually handled by only one BA driver. Well, one BA driver on each side. So, um, since there are five drivers in these earphones, or, or yeah, in, in the Maverick, um, and two are already being used for the, the bass, so that means uh, there are two drivers for the treble. So you would think that with this sort of configuration, the mids on these will be anemic, but that is not the case at all. Um, in terms of frequency response, just like the bass, I don't think these are really specially tuned. Uh, I think they're just supposed to be kind of neutral, but even with that, I think that uh, the bass and the mids, they both have great separation from the other elements when you listen to music. Uh, even though in terms of frequency response, they don't stand out. Like, you won't, you won't find the bass or the mids to be really loud or to drown out other things. But even with that, you can still pick out the bass and the mids from other elements of the music. And I think that's really interesting and uh, that really helps with the imaging on the Maverick. So, um, I don't think the mids are anemic at all. Um, and one great thing about these, these is that the vocals never blend into the music, unlike my previous daily driver, the UE900, which I'll be doing a comparison with the Maverick. I'll also comparing these uh, with the Shui SCA46 later in this video, but with these, the vocal usually blends into the music, and that might give you a warmer, uh, more harmonic presentation, but to me, the vocal would sound like, well, the singers would sound like they caught a cold or something. So, I'm not a fan of that on the UE900. But that's not a problem with the Maverick. So, when you listen to music, you wouldn't find a singer to stand out. Uh, but, you can still identify it. You can still pick it out and just kind of ignore everything else if you want to do that. So... Great job on the imaging in the mids. Now, the mids and the bass are not specially tuned to my ears, but the treble, uh, the trebles definitely are. So, I think there's a 16 kilohertz bump in the frequency response, uh, and um, I think that's uh, probably the major reason why when I first listened to these uh, in e, e earphone in Osaka, I immediately fell in love with these. Because I've never heard any earphones that are tuned like that. Um, mostly, um, uh, I actually auditioned a bunch of earphones on that day. And for the most part, I don't think uh, those earphones have that sort of special property. Like uh, in the treble like these. Um, the closest thing that has that, that, that also has this sort of similar treble quality would be uh, the Unique Melody Mabath, which is supposed to be the entry level by the company, even though 
if you look at the price, uh, seventy, uh, I think seventy thousand uh, yen. That's not really an entry price, but regardless, uh, I think the map my bath sounds really great, but it's V shaped, so I don't like that. But uh, the my bath shares the same uh, treble quality to these, and uh, so. That's why I like the Mabath. Uh, I also didn't find the bass on those to be prominent, so I like that too. But going back to the uh, the Maverick, um, I was really stunned by how crispy and clean the treble sounds. And the treble never sounds sibilant to me at all. Uh, and because of how specially tuned the treble is, I find that... Uh, when I listen to music, I think everything just sounds a lot more, I guess, high high fidelity. Um, even though they don't, like, like maybe the files themselves are not really that high quality, I guess. But because um, of the treble, that sort of increase in the 16 kilohertz, I find that everything just sounds very high, high quality, very high fidelity. Very high fi I guess I should say. Uh, and, um, you know, it gives me that sort of studio recording feeling. Uh, so, I think everything just sounds very realistic. Also, thanks to the treble. Especially with string instruments, because I do play violin and I do understand how uh, what the bowing texture is like on the violin and how it transpires uh, when it comes to uh, the sounds from the violin. So with other earphones, they usually just they handle the treble so that the treble are just enough. And because of that, um, for the most part, strings instruments would just sound like um, like they're synthesized sounds. Uh, you can sort of say that, oh, that sounds like violin, that sounds like cello. But you don't get that bowing texture. But with these, all those bowing textures are just, they just come back. And those instruments finally sound like string instruments. So uh, I think these also have done a great job with the treble. Uh, you know, the treble is handled by two BA drivers, and uh, you would think that would make these earphones very sibilant, but that's also not the case. So, uh, I think Unique Melody overall has done a great job with the tuning across the frequency spectrum. Of course, some people would find the treble to be like maybe a little bit too much, but uh, if you get used to it, you'll find yourself enjoying it a lot more. Because I think this kind of tuning is very special and not exactly that common. So now I want to talk about imaging and soundstage on these. So I've already sort of talked about uh, the imaging on these. Imaging on these, um, you know, in the frequency response, nothing really jumps out at you, uh, in, uh, except for the treble. But you can still, uh, like I've said before, you can still pick out. Let's say, oh, you want to pick out the bass. You can pick it out and it is not affected by the other frequencies. Or you can pick out a vocal, and the vocal wouldn't blend into the melody. Like, it wouldn't be drowned out by other things. It wouldn't sound like the singer caught a cold, or he's suffocating, that sort of thing. So, uh, I think imaging-wise, okay, even with the enhanced treble, um, I still don't think the trebles are like, you know, Affecting everything else, just drowning everything else. I don't think that's the case. Uh, yeah, like everything can be, like you can consider everything to be, all the elements to be like individual entities. So I like that about the Maverick. Uh, in terms of soundstage, I find these to be unfortunately a little bit narrow. Um, or at least add narrow to some cheaper earphones like the uh, UE900. Um, what else? I think the SC A four six also does better uh, with the sound stage, but that can be fixed if you change out the ear tips, like I've done here. 
but what these uh, this pair even really excels in is uh, with the vertical sound stage so while these might do a little bit better when it comes to the left right sound stage i think the maverick is miles ahead when it comes to the vertical layering so usually when i listen to music through the maverick i find myself uh, imagining uh, basically the majority of the music uh, the melody the rhythm that kind of thing are uh, coming from both sides like two walls the trebles are sort of like ornaments on top the vocal uh, is at the center maybe a little bit above the center and the bass is at the bottom and that feeling is very clear with the maverick unlike some other earphones like the logitech ue 900 which are uh, quad ba earphones as well as the shure se 846 and because of how horizontal the sound stage is on those earphones uh, sometimes when you're listening when you listen to some busier music um, you can't really pick out individual elements they are just kind of mashed together into the, this this layer of sound um, and uh, of, of course uh, these busier musics would sound really messy so I uh, you know I don't think that's good but the Maverick doesn't suffer from this problem. It does really well when it comes to the vertical layering. Uh, of course, the left-right soundstage could be better. Uh, these sound like they are a little bit closed in, but if you some, use some other ear tips, you can fix that problem. Now, I think that's the reason why the Maverick are as vertical sounding as they are compared to some other earphones, like the, uh, let's say, the UE900 I have on the right. So, I think the difference comes from the design in a in a sound tube. So on the Maverick, there are actually four boards within this sound tube. So this is a quad board earphone with five drivers and three way crossover. And um, not sure if you can see, but there are actually uh, three holes on top. Okay, so one, two, three, and there's another one hidden beneath. Uh, these three sound tubes whereas in the UE900 there we go there are only two boards and uh, there's a pinhole board on the right and uh, a bigger hole on the left and the pinhole board basically handles the bass while the bigger board handles everything else and uh, obviously on the SCA46 it's just like a, a one giant hole uh, with uh, like a f metal filter, uh, something like that. So, I think uh, what the sound, uh, what the boards do is that they basically physically separate the sounds, like different frequencies. So, that's why I can, uh, you know, I always imagine how the bass, uh, where the bass is or where the trebles are. Uh, you know, I can just always. Im you know, have this sort of mental image of where everything is, and uh, it just sounds really lively, uh, pretty realistic. Okay, so now let's do some comparisons uh, between the Maverick and some other earphones I've listened to before. Uh, I want to compare these to the SE A46 because the SE A46 and uh, you know the SE A46 are a lot more well known than the Maverick, and. Uh, they're pretty easy recommendations for people who like bass. Uh, even with, um, like, even though, excuse me, even though those um, uh, BA driver earphones, they kind of, they still really do, uh, do really well with bass. But anyway, uh, okay, so I think sound signature-wise, the Maverick is uh, less bassy, but it also gives more detailed and beautiful mids, and in the Maverick excels really well uh, in the treble. Uh, the treble sounds very crispy and a lot uh, more prominent. And on the other hand, the SC846 with a balanced filter on has a different sound signature. Um, I haven't tried the treble filter on those because um, I actually borrowed the SC846 from my uncle and uh, he didn't feel like you know, digging out his stuff to try to get me those different other filters other different filters. Um, but anyway, with the 
balanced filter on, I think the SE46 are uh, a lot bassier and it is a lot more lower mids driven. And because of that, uh, I think music like cello or well, things like cello would sound really great because you can definitely feel that reverberation in the air. Uh, and I think cello sounds really tasteful with the SE A46. But the problem with the SE A46 compared to the Maverick is that the treble on those are just not Im impressive at all. And because of that, bowing textures are just kind of missing. Um, of course, you would get that reverberation very nice, uh, sounds really tasteful, but you just don't get the bowing texture, and you really need that texture uh, from the high frequencies, which the SE A46 lack with the balance filter on. So, besides, I think that um, in terms of the overall listening experience, I'll find the Maverick to be more natural and realistic sounding and... Uh, on the other hand, the SE A46 always sounds like there's a certain filter being acro applied across the frequency spectrum, and that just makes them sound a lot less natural. Uh, I think soundstage-wise, they are pretty similar, but like I've said before, the SE A46 does better uh, in terms of the left-right separation, but the Maverick does sound like uh, the sounds are more spread out within this sim sort of similar-sized uh, soundstage. And obviously, the Maverick does give more height. Uh, and, you know, that sort of height is something I've never experienced with earphones before. I never thought height is possible. Uh, you know, I read some forum posts and people always kind of say, Oh, the, uh, you can hear the, uh, the height with these earphones, uh, they're great. And I thought that was just kind of bullshit. But with these earphones, I can finally experience what that means. So, that's really impressive. So... In this comparison, to me, the Maverick definitely wins. So next, I have a, a comparison between the Maverick and my previous daily driver, the UE900. Not the UE900S, those are the newer version. What I have here is the original OG UE900. And as you can see, the paint is just completely gone. <laughs> but um, this comparison will be based on the UE900 with uh, the stock black cable on. I didn't like the sound with the blue cable. I think the black cable sounds a bit better. But anyway, uh, I'm trying to get camera to focus. Okay, so uh, in terms of frequency response, I think the UE900 uh, a lot more similar to the Maverick than the SE A46 is. Um, I think the UE900 is uh, it provides slightly more sub bass and bass presence. Um, the mids are comparable, but um, because of how the UE900 uh, are tuned, I think these have less mid highs, uh, especially from uh, coming from one kilohertz to two kilohertz. Like, um, and I think that's the reason why uh, the UE900 does worse when it comes to vocal. Like the vocals would just blend into the melody. Uh, but that's not a thing on the Maverick. Uh, I think the Maverick, on the other hand, is brighter sounding, and uh, of course the treble is more prominent, but it's, no, it's not overdone. And uh, even though the bass presence is weaker on the Maverick, uh, I never found uh, the bass to be lacking. So that's very nice. Uh, the bass is just right for me, and... These definitely do better when it comes to the bass texture than the UE900. Or maybe even to a certain extent the SE A46. But really the bass on the SE A46 is not bad at all. It is really good when it comes to, uh, you know, that sort of BA bass. Uh, the Maverick is also quite a bit cleaner and refined sounding than UE900. And uh, it often provides an area and more... Okay, so in the document I said open representation, but I don't think that's really the case. Uh, but anyway, it does sound a little bit area actually, uh, the UE, uh, the Maverick. But I think maybe the UE900 is a bit more open when it comes to to the uh, representation of sounds. 
Um, the sound stage are uh, similar, but once again, I think the UE900 is a bit wider uh, on the left, right. So, uh, but once again, the Mavic does a lot better when it comes to the height of sound stage, and that is really important with uh, BCM music, as I've uh, explained before. So, um, I'm very happy to say that the Mavic successfully replaced the UE900 as my daily driver. I uh, I think the Mavic is definitely a lot better than the UE900. Now, I want to quickly talk about uh, ear tips matching with um, the Mavic. So, uh, the Mavic comes with two different types of ear tips. You have the black silicon ear tips and the white foam tips. Um, I really don't like the sound with the black ear tips. Okay. The bass are a lot weaker, the treble is not beautiful like how it was. Uh, so I think these black ear tips just kind of remove or um, yeah 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 removed everything that's great about the Maverick. Or maybe not remove but attenuate that uh, those good properties and uh, I think it's just these are just uh, not great for the Maverick. What about the white foam tips? I think these are better than the black silicon tips. But these are still not the perfect matching for me. So with these, you get really good bass, uh, really good lower mids, uh, awesome isolation, but the treble are just not... Like, they don't express the treble enough, I think. But, you know, these are still great options. So if you don't want to try out other ear tips, uh, I would totally rock these. And besides, I think these are um, really nicely made. Uh, the texture on the ear tips are very smooth, and you definitely wouldn't get uh, any sort of irritation with these ear tips. Unlike with complies, sometimes uh, the complies just, they're just kind of itchy and irritating in your ear canals. And uh, I don't know why people like uh, complies so much, because they don't last long. Uh, and by that I mean they lose their memory foam sort of property and they uh, sort of disintegrate very quickly and you have to keep buying those over and over and over again. And I just don't find those sounds with complies that awesome at all. I actually hate that sound. So don't know why people like those so much. But these, these memory ear tips, they do, they are a lot better. Okay, they feel more high quality, they feel more, well, they are more uh, durable, and, uh, you know, they're just better. They're just better. And the sounds don't suck with these, actually. So, now, I've also tried using the, uh, the gray silicone ear tips from uh, uh, the UE900, and uh, these ear tips are actually my previous favorite. Um, and uh, I find that with these, the Maverick just suddenly becomes like a, a different performer. Um, the Maverick suddenly sounds more dazzling, more stunning, more impressive. And by that I mean um, the bass, uh, the mids, they're all still very detailed. And the treble becomes uh, more dazzling. Uh, but it's still not, it is still not uh, sibling sounding. So I think these silicon e tips are definitely a great match for the Maverick. But there's a problem here because uh, actually with these ear tips, um, uh, the Maverick becomes a little bit more close to sounding, uh, more closed in, more intimate, and I'm not looking for that. I don't need intimate sounding. I want wide soundstage, and so you know the Maverick themselves are already not. They're already not wide sounding, so uh, these ear tips are definitely not fixing that problem. But you know, all in all, I still find that uh, these silicon, silicon ear tips are a great match for the Maverick. So uh, if you like a more intimate sound, you'll probably find these ear tips to be perfect for the Maverick. And because of that, I have something even better for the Maverick. And this brings me to uh, personally, personally the best ear tips that I think for... Well, okay, let me rephrase it. This brings me to uh, the ear tips that I personally think are the perfect match for the Maverick, and that is the Spiral Dot by JVC. 
Okay. Yes. So, JVC spiral dots. Uh, I got these in the medium size. I haven't tried the spin fits yet because I don't have those. Uh, yeah, so I will have to try those out, but I've heard great things with those. Okay, so with the silicone, sorry, the spiral dots, uh, the special thing about the, these ear tips is that there are apparently some very tiny little indentations. Is that even the right word, indentations? Uh, yeah, anyway, some very tiny dots uh, in the inner lining of the ear tips themselves. And they are apparently supposed to absorb some of the uh, echoes uh, uh, in your ear canal, especially in the high frequency. But with that said, uh, I don't think anything is, uh, you know, like, you would think that with that sort of absorbent property, uh, you would just miss out on the treble, on the bass, uh, you know, everything else. But I don't think that's the case. Um, so everything else is still the same in terms of the uh, frequency response, the mids, the heights, the, uh, the bass. They still sound like how they should be on the Maverick. But these ear tips do open up the sound stage. So uh, before, I would say the sound stage is like a square, like maybe with the UE900 silicone ear tips. But with this, uh, the, the spiral dots, this sound stage becomes a rectangle. And I love it. Uh, you can feel it not just when when you are listening to these, uh, when you're sitting down indoor or at home, you can feel it even when you use these outside. Like when you commute or walking on the streets, you can still hear that rectangular sound stage. Uh, so, yeah, I think the JVC spiral dots are actually pretty amazing for the uh, the Maverick. But of course, if you're looking for different uh, uh, frequency response, these are not going to be the ATFs for you, but uh, you know, I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for a a fix to the sound stage, and uh, you know, the spiral dots uh, do do a very good job in opening up the sound. So I think that's a great match for the Maverick. If you have these earphones, definitely try the spiral dots. They're cheap and um, they're great. Okay, so that's it for the for my unique melody Maverick review. Uh, this is just what my mobile setup looks like now. It's just the Maverick plus the Onkyo DPX1. A fantastic music player. Uh, and, you know, better than the iPod Touch 4th generation I had before. Uh, but, you know, iPod Touch is uh, not actually that bad when it comes to sound quality. But it's just that the 4th generation one just wasn't that great. Uh, you know, I think the music just sounds a bit too tame, too cold on those. But... Uh, with these, uh, I think the imaging and the sound stage is uh, quite a bit better, and uh, there are actually also some pretty useful uh, settings you can do uh, with the DPX one. So uh, you know, and I actually also bought these uh, secondhand at e earphone. So uh, this is my setup, and I really enjoy this. But um, anyway. Uh, this is going to be the end of the review. Um, this is something different on my channel. I usually just upload uh, gaming com uh, gaming videos without any commentary, but, you know, I don't think these earphones get enough attention at all. And uh, I think these are actually really fantastic earphones. Uh, so I feel like I have to make a video about these. And, uh, you know, if you search uh, for Maverick on YouTube, you're probably just going to find some ads. Or maybe you can dig up some videos by earphone, but those are in Japanese. So, you know, not everybody can understand Japanese. I can't. But, um, yeah, if you um, if you like earphones, audio gears, and uh, you're going to Japan, definitely try these out. Uh, or at least go to earphone and try out the earphones. There are a bunch of top-end earphones just, uh, just, you know, just being set up for you to plug and play. So, anyway, uh, this is the end of this video. If 
these videos have been useful for you, uh, please consider giving uh, giving these videos a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.